here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcast, however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. Is there anything more fun than shooting steel and do the whole bang, clang, you get that immediate feedback. It's like a, well, it's like an old-fashioned shooting gallery, you know, when things fall down, things go clang. And, and you think, oh, yeah, cool, steal your targets. What, is, what else is there to know? Well, evidently, <laughs> there's a lot to know. Uh, joining me right now to, to talk about that and maybe educate us a little bit, uh, Travis Gibson from MGM Targets in Idaho, actually just down the hill from us, as we like to say. Hey, Travis, how are you? Good, Tom, how are you? I'm good. Uh, all right, this year when you come up here in snowmobile behind my house, you got to stop in and say hi, okay? That sounds good. I, I don't think we're uh, actually too far from you when we do. No, you're not. And you're, and you're not even using the snowmobiles anymore, are you? You're using those crazy motorcycles with skis. Yeah, the the snow bike kits. Yeah, they're uh, they they seem to be a lot easier, a lot less work to ride around. <laughs> yeah, sure. For you, for me, it'd be like go dig Tom out again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm really sorry we couldn't get you on here at the same time with uh, Latham and Seeklander because the three of you, it would be like a circus time for sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, that time for sure <laughs> with, with those two clowns. <laughs> well, let, you know, let me ask you, before we talk about steel targets and all, because that's your business and you know that world, uh, I was talking earlier about... Um, the ability of people just to show up at a shooting match, even if they don't really don't know much about it, and get welcomed into it. You have been a competitive shooter probably all your life, pretty close to it. I mean, am, am I off with that? Can somebody just kind of show up and say, look, I really want to do this, but I don't know much about it? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, the, the, the biggest hurdle is, um, you know, when you show up there as a new guy is actually going and kind of um, letting all the clowns that are there shooting know that you're a new guy, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. You know, lots of the guys are that you know that I shoot with, anyways. We try and look for the guy that's kind of standing over by himself, watching, not shooting, to come up and ask him, like, "Hey, bro, are you new? You know, have you ever done this before? You know, are you thinking about coming out and shooting?" And so we try and you know look out for those guys. But a lot of the times, you know, the competitors get pretty involved with what they're going on, you know, with what they're doing. But right. uh, yeah, for sure, once you find somebody and um, you know they you get their attention and they know what's going on, yeah, they're going to probably chat your ear off and give you way more information than you ever wanted. <laughs> well, I mean, I've had people tell me, look, I showed up there. I didn't have exactly what I needed. Before I knew it, I had a loner gun, a loner holster, a loner mag pouches, and, and a belt, and I was ready to go. And people are, like, digging into their trunks and the back of their trucks to, to equip me. It's crazy. Yeah, for sure. That's, you know, and, and anybody that's been in, you know, the action shooting sports for, for uh, any amount of time has tons of extra gear, and they always bring extra stuff. And, you know, I've literally been at matches and seen a new guy walk up, and we're only a stage or two into it. Like, hey, man, you want to shoot? Well, no, I don't. I don't bring it. I didn't bring any of my stuff. Well, that's not a good enough excuse. You're gonna have to figure <laughs> something else out because we've got all of those things and ammo for you. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's um, yeah. If you don't know, if you've never been to a match and you're thinking about going, um, yeah, reach out. There's a, most of the time there's going to be a match director and and he can get you hooked up with the right folks and whatnot, but. Yeah, if you just go and show up, there will be people there that will be more than willing to help you out and loan you gear. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. It's a great community. All right, so to, wh- tell people about MGM Targets. What is MGM? So uh, MGM Targets, we, we build uh, firearms training equipment, lots of stuff for military and law enforcement, but then, of course, um, lots of stuff for um, you know what we call the civilian crowd, competition shooters, uh, hunters, guys that just want to go, you know, plink and, and um, you know, have, have a good time with their kids or grandkids or whatever. Um, the majority of the stuff that we do is 3 inch AR-550 material. Uh, just, they can't get their hands wrapped and shoot pieces of steel with a gun. It sounds very, very dangerous to them. And, um, you know, it's just if you follow our standard, uh, our recommended standoff distances, which are 15 uh, yards for um, center fire pistol and center fire, or, I'm sorry, rim fire pistol and rifle, uh, and 150 yards for center fire rifle, uh, there's virtually no chance of you getting damaged from shooting a piece of steel with one of those guns. So it's just, you know, like you like you mentioned it uh, before we got started here, doing the bang and clang thing, that's just uh, it's very, very rewarding. It's a lot of fun. Well, it, it really is. I'm, right now, actually yesterday, I just got a picture from uh, Ryan, my granddaughter, 11-year-old granddaughter, is at the FTW Ranch, and she's clanging steel at 500 yards with her brand-new 6.5 Creedmoor. 
I'm thinking, you know, that's just tons of fun right there. It is. And, you know, a lot of, I'm actually teaching a, a long range class tomorrow morning. And, um, you know, those guys, they, they're, and they asked me, said, you know, we want to, we're thinking about shooting some, you know, quote unquote long range, you know, at a, at a hunt. And I said, okay, so what are you thinking? And the guy's like, oh, I don't know. If we get out to 400 or 450, that'd be great. And I'm like, yeah, we get that done in the first 20 minutes, you know. Yeah, we're, we can get you on. At, four, at 400, we can get you on. That's not going to be hard. No, it, yeah, that is that is literally a chip shot. I mean, it's, yeah. um, you know, being able to shoot shoot steel, and, and especially when you start getting the distance, it's, it's, uh, it's, it makes you giggle, you know. <laughs> it, it, it Honestly, when you have a lag time between the shot and then hearing the target go clang, and, of course, with a lot of these rifles, you can actually see the impact in the scope. You shoot, and then you see it. It's not instantaneous. You realize, okay, now it's out there a ways because it's taking the bullet a while to get there, and then, of course, it takes a while for the sound to get back to you. That's that's just fun. Yeah, it, it, it's a good time. It, and when you going from there, when you actually get some, you know, get somebody on a piece of glass behind you, and they start actually seeing traces of the bullet, and oh man, there's yeah, just it goes, that takes it to another level. It's all sorts of good times then. Well, now, when people are choosing targets, is there like steel and then there's steel, or is there something to know about this? The, the main thing that you need to know, um, you know, is just making sure that you're getting good quality AR-500 or 550 steel. Everything that we do, with the exception of our rimfire line, is all 3.8s AR-550. Um, we do kind of have it broken down into some rifle-grade stuff and pistol-grade stuff, and the only mm -hmm. thing that means is that the rifle grade stuff is meant to be shot um, at distance, so it's designed a little bit differently. Um, but it's just, yeah, just make sure that if you're, you know, you're not shooting any centerfire rifles any closer than 100 or 150 yards or so. And uh, if you're going to shoot pistol stuff, just make sure that the piece of steel that you're shooting is good, hardened plate, and make sure it's nice and smooth because that's what causes fragments to come back at the shooters. If you're shooting a piece okay. of steel that's all yes. pockmarked up, and you're shooting it with a, you know, relatively speaking, a big slow projectile like a, you know, a pistol round. That's when you have a chance of a fragment going in there and coming coming back at you. So okay, I, sure I want to steal. I'm glad you mentioned that because I wanted to talk about that. If you get, if you show up at a range and you got steel and it's just it looks like the craters of the moon, that's actually not a safe target to shoot, is it? No, sir. It's time to leave because <laughs> I mean, if anybody's shooting that piece of steel, there's a good chance that you're going to get a chunk of it on you. You know, so yeah, that's very, very dangerous. Yeah, exactly. And people say, well, you know, I mean, it's just steel. No, they don't understand. That's how you start getting. And I, we're talking about, and you've seen it, and I've seen it. If you've shot enough, uh, people get hit with something bouncing back, and I mean, uh, it could be a piece of jacket, and I mean, it'll cut you. Yeah, for for sure. I, I mean, it most definitely will. And you know, with, with that being said, you know, kind of the, you know, what everybody says in the, you know, in the competition shooting industry, especially when we're talking about handgun stuff is if you haven't been fragged, you haven't been shooting very long. You know, it's kind of the nature of the game. It's going to happen every now and again, which is where we always make sure we're wearing a, you know, a ball cap with a visor and eye and ear yep. pro and those sorts of things. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it might be something where you're in a over piece, you know, that goes up in there and it comes down and it lands on you. So it's not mm -hmm. like it's cutting you, but I mean, you're, you know, that's yeah, that's kind of the nature hit. of the game, but do everything you can to make sure you're mitigating the chances of getting damaged. <laughs> One other thing I want to ask you about, I, I we bought some good steel, had some really good steel at our place, just a little private range, and we left it out there because nobody had access to it. We came out there one day, and turned out the owner had been out there, and he decided he was going to shoot one of our pieces of steel. And we looked at it, and it's got this perfect hole in it. And he shot it like 150 yards, and I go, okay, what happened? 257 Weatherby. Yeah. <laughs> what we say in the industry is speed kills, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, small projectiles that are going fast, those, those are almost the, like that's the worst you can do on the steel. Things like a 308, uh, even a 300 Win Mag, 6.5, 6 Creedmoor, you know, those sorts of things, you'd really be surprised at how well the steel holds up to those. Shoot, right. Talking about shooting a plate that moves a bunch. But yeah, you know, 22, 250s, anything that's got a projectile that's going over, you know, 3,000 feet per second up in that neck of the woods, mm -hmm. it starts to get a little bit dicey. And yeah, and if you're shooting something like a, you know, like that guy's gun, you know, especially at 150 yards, yeah, that's that's going to get sporty. 
Yeah, I mean, he's, he probably had impact at 3,500 feet per second. It's just going to go right through. So the, just one of those things to know. If you're buying steel, if you're shooting steel, your own steel, just understand what the parameters are and what you can do with it. If they want to know more about uh, MGM targets and buying targets and all that kind of stuff, do you, do you guys sell direct? Yeah, yep. So uh, just MGMTargets.com. Uh, you can go on the online there, check out the website, and you know, and we'll uh, we'll ship direct. And then uh, if you got questions, you can give us a call at the toll free number. It's eight 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 seven six seven seven three seven one. Talk with one of our sales guys, and you know they'll answer questions for you. If you like, I said if you're talking about shooting a twenty two two fifty, we have targets for that. So it's oh. just a matter of making sure you get the right one. You know. Sounds good, Travis Skip. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Sounds great. Thanks for having me, Tom. Appreciate it. All right, you take care. We'll get together here shortly.